names everywhere. They also believe it's not possible to change deeply the situation, so they just try to, to make a retouchment of this model. Those are the so-called social democrats, and you're finding them all over the world. They are in power in many countries now, changing, I don't know, the, la the law number 5,234, Article 4, letter B, <laughs> and saying this is the most we can, this is the, this is the, the sentence they love more, this is the most we can. Uh, it's not good to go uh, uh, faster and so on. They always have a, a, a foot in the break. At the deep, they are very, very good for the right. The right loves them because they government with a speech for the left but doing things for the right. You find them all everywhere. <laughs> and that's the situation of uh, Bachelet. Hi. Hi. I have the Hi. mic here. Um, I was just wondering, what's your take on the uh, the problem with Chile, between Chile and Peru and Bolivia and the oceanic limits? I don't know what your take is on it, since we're taking, talking about um, getting the countries together, but there seems to be a problem because, you know, if you if you get those countries together and you live and you give access to Bolivia, <clears throat> then there's the possibility of a lot of violence being generated in that area. Okay. Uh, very shortly, say to me. There was a war 30, 130 years ago. Uh, we have been living with this war for 130 years, telling new generations that we had this war creating heroes uh, and creating separation between the countries, nationalism and all that, xenophobia. But the truth is that this was a war, this wasn't a war between the people from Chile, Peru, and Bolivia. This was what I call a neo-colonialism war created by the British Empire at the time because they wanted the natural resources that were there. They wanted lower taxes and so on. What we contribute to this war were the young people who died. That was all. So after that war, Bolivia lost their sea. We, the humanists, since we the beginning, since we we began with the party in 1984, we said that Chile must integrate itself to Latin America, and for doing that, the first action Chile must done is to contribute with Bolivia to have not only free access to the Pacific Ocean, but to have a sovereignty, continuity to the Pacific Ocean. At that time, in 1984, when we said that, 99.9% uh, .9 of the Chileans said, you're crazy, we disagree, and so on, because the propaganda against that was very strong. After 23 years, or 21 years, 2005, when I proposed that as a presidential candidate, more than 27% of the Chileans agreed with that, and that's a big change. For the first time, the Chilean and the Bolivian government are talking about that, and that's because of the pressure we placed for many years. And not only the government, but also the academic uh, sector, the students, the workers, the indigenous people, they are all trying to to uh, strengthen relations and to help this process to go on. I think that if we can reach that goal, uh, definitely we are going to be in a completely different situation. We are going to be able to uh, reduce the uh, budget, the, the, the defense budget. Chile is one of the Latin American countries that is, is spending more money in uh, weapons. Uh, but also is doing Bolivia, uh, uh, Peru, so. And we need that money for other uh, priorities. 
That's why it's so important that point. And I'm sure that in the next couple of years we're going to be to see big changes uh, of integration between the three countries. Thank you very much, my friends. That's it? One more. I'm afraid I think that's oh. all the time we have questions. I have a that's very... That's all the time we have questions the, for. The key question that. for him, though. Just, and the key question is, I'm from Puerto Rico. Ah. And Puerto Rico is an interesting place because Puerto Rico is not geographically in the United States, but it's politically and economic integrated, quote unquote. Culturally, it's affiliated, it's, it's part of Latin America. So what, if any role do you see for little Puerto Rico in this new move? I'm not a, an expert in Puerto Rico, <laughs> but I see that those situations, speci special situations, we can be very uh, angry of what's happening, or we can see it as opportunities. I personally see it as maybe those are certain type of opportunities to see what can integration be at the future. When I ended my speech, I was talking about the one Ameri in integrated America. When I say America, I don't say the name you give to this country, America. I say the complete America, <laughs> uh, from Tierra del Fuego to Northern Canada. So, of course, the way of integration I see for America is not the way it's now between United States and Puerto Rico, but you can Thing, starting from that in different ways of developing this integration. So that's what I, I, I can say about that. But most of all, for me, the important point is that the decision about the situation must be done by the people from Puerto Rico. That's the most important point. But to take the decisions, they must have free press. And to have free press is not just to have press, because, and this is, again, a long issue, Sometimes you have many newspapers and many TV channels, as you have here, but it doesn't mean free press at all. It's not a matter of how many you have. It's a matter of how free they are to show different positions. That's it. Thank you, Thomas. That's all the, that's all the questions we have time for. Sorry. Uh, but if you're interested, of course, we have... Thomas just wrote this book, Al Fin de la Prehistoria. It's with the prologue of Evo Morales. It's available for sale in the lobby if you'd like to pick it up. And he'll be around, of course, to chat more informally.